stopping your birth control, what you should know. Do you need a detox? Hi friends, I'm Dr. Natalie Crawford. I'm a board certified OBGYN and REI. I'm a fertility doctor. And I talk about all things hormones, reproductive health, lifestyle fertility every single day. My goal with this entire channel is just so you have more information about your body and you're able to make better choices about the world around you. There's so much misinformation and too much information from unverified sources that sometimes it's really hard to know what's true and what's not. And that's why I'm here to make sure that you understand the facts about your body so that you can make the best choices for you. I am all about reproductive autonomy, meaning your health decisions should be made between you and a doctor. And you can't make those decisions unless you're given the facts about your body and the information you need to make those the best. So that's what we're breaking down today. In short, I'm talking about stopping birth control and the side effects and what you should know. Huge disclaimer. Not everybody needs the pill. Not everybody should be on the pill. I'm not 100% the biggest advocate for the pill. I think it is one option that can control hormones and can be used to prevent a pregnancy and treat other medical conditions. For some people, the pill is life-changing positive. For others, they hate it. So this is so, so that you can make decisions and not avoid a method of effective contraception or hormonal treatment for a potential medical issue just because you were scared of something that you might have heard. So you should make the choices for you. In short, I got this text over on Instagram and DMs. So it's, hi, Dr. Crawford. I've heard many doctors tell their patients to stop their birth control cold turkey. Is this true? I know so many people that have had hair loss, weight gain, acne as their hormones start trying to get back to normal. Should we be taking vitamins to help with these deficiencies caused by birth control to minimize symptoms from stopping BC? Or is there a way to slowly come off the BC? I get the question and I'm glad you asked it because there are people out there selling birth control pill cleanse, books, detox, vitamins, and they're taking your money for things that you don't need. So the short answer is that you don't need to buy their supplement for a birth control pill cleanse. The birth control pill that we're talking here is a combined pill of ethanol estradiol and a type of progestin. There's many other types of contraceptive, but when we're talking about the pill or BC, this is what we're talking about here. Now, ethanol estradiol is a synthetic type of estradiol. Estradiol is the type of estrogen that the ovaries make. Now, there's other type of estrogens in your body, your fat cells make a type called estrone, for example. But specifically, estradiol is the type from your ovaries that is made and it protects your brain, your bones, your heart, helps you feel good, have energy. It's the hormone that is highest in that follicular phase. So in the first half of your normal cycle, as you grow an egg, FSH from the brain stimulates a follicle to grow. As a follicle grows, it makes estrogen, and that estrogen is going to give you the energy during that phase. It's going to make you feel like you can concentrate, you can do more, you can check things off the list, want to have sex as it gets higher. At its peak, your cervical mucus is going to start to be that sticky, egg white, stretchy cervical mucus. And when you have that fight estrogen, it then stimulates your brain to send out an LH surge, which is going to allow you to ovulate, and that follicle becomes a corpus luteum, making progesterone. Now, in a normal month, not on any type of hormones, your body has a couple weeks where you're estrogen dominant, so you have high estrogen as it rises, no progesterone, then you ovulate, and then you have both estrogen and progesterone made, but progesterone is being made at fluctuating intervals based on the LH pulses from the brain. And if you're not pregnant, the corpus luteum dies, those hormones drop, and you'll get a period, and this starts over. If you get pregnant, that pregnancy comes and it implants and causes HCG, which stimulates more constant progesterone production. So some of the side effects from the pill is actually from the progesterone component because progesterone is what tends to get you ready to gestate a baby. So even in your natural cycle, when you're in the luteal phase, when the corpus luteum is making progesterone, that's where you're going to feel hungrier. You might feel more sensitive to certain foods or smells. You might have more breast tenderness, feel more tired or fatigued. You have less energy, progesterone brain. You just can't concentrate quite as much. And ultimately, your body's trying to be like, hey, avoid that. 
let's get ready, put on some weight, have a baby. In your month to month, if you're just cycling, you're gonna feel these fluctuations. On the birth control pill, you have ethanol estradiol in different variations. So the low pills, low, 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 those have lower levels of ethanol estradiol. In some people, these levels are so low, it might not prevent you from ovulating. But because you also have a daily progestin, you are making it so that the uterine lining can't be penetrated by an embryo. Daily progesterone is not normal. It's a very effective contraceptive option. So understanding that difference is important. The different types of progesterones can cause different side effects. And so that is one thing where I will see a patient who a long time ago tried a pill and hated it, but there's a lot of different types of progestin options. However, the birth control pill has to be taken at the relatively the same time of day, and you don't have it last in your body very long, meaning it's out of your body so fast. We see people who miss a single pill go on and ovulate in that same cycle. So this idea that we have to detox from it to get our brain and ovary to start working back again, that's not right. As soon as you take away that ethanol estradiol, that progestin combination, and mostly the estrogen, your brain will recognize the drop in estrogen and it'll start sending out FSH to grow an egg and make natural estrogen from your ovary. So that does not take long. What people are talking about when they're asking this question is that the combined birth control pill is metabolized through the liver. It increases something called sex hormone binding globulin. Sex hormone binding globulin binds to sex hormones that are circulating in your body. One of these is testosterone. And when it binds to testosterone, your testosterone is now less active. So it can't go attached to your face and give you a zit or cause hair growth because it's not active. It's circulating around bound, so it can't go bind to its receptor. When you stop the pill, your sex hormone binding globulin is going to drop you're gonna have less production of it, it's gonna go back to normal. That means you'll now have more free circulating testosterone. So it's very common to see the impact of that testosterone in, in everybody, especially when you first come off the pill because that's a change. Also really important is that if you have PCOS or some underlying condition that has higher than normal testosterone and irregular period. The pill might be a way to treat or control some of those side effects. You will see dermatologists recommend the pill for acne or for hair control. You will see people use the birth control pill for, you know, PMS, PMDD, for menstrual migraine. There's a lot of reasons why having a constant hormone level can be beneficial. Most of us, if you have menstrual migraines, for example, it's the change from either high to low or low to high that causes the onset of the symptoms. So being constant can make somebody significantly better than even the normal fluctuations in a cycle. But if you had undiagnosed PCOS, and I have a whole video series on PCOS, and now you come off the pill, your body is going to go back to its normal. And what is its normal? Its normal does not have regular cycles and has a normal higher testosterone because of the lack of ovulation. And now that sex hormone binding globulin drops, testosterone rises. You're going to get acne, facial hair growth, but hair loss, some, remember male pattern baldness. You might gain weight, especially in the abdominal area, have more insulin resistance, have a harder time losing that weight, which is the pattern of PCOS. And then you also see people who are on the pill who stop it, who don't ovulate, and maybe they had underlying hypothalamic dysfunction, meaning it wasn't PCOS, but their brain wasn't sending out the signal from the hypothalamus to the pituitary to send out FSH or LH. That often happens. Stress, chronic illness, from over-exercising or being an elite athlete, from calorie restriction, severe weight loss, anything in that category where your brain is interpreting a severe stressor on your system and not sure that it should carry a pregnancy, turning off the HPO, hypothalamus pituitary ovarian axis, is how it gets the job done. So when you're on the pill, you're having a bleed if you take a pause in the pills or you take the placebo. You might not have a bleed if you take continuous pills every single day, and that's fine, that's not hurting your fertility. When you stop the pill, your body will revert back to your normal state. Your normal state might be regular cyclic periods, and you can get pregnant immediately after stopping the pill. Your regular cyclic state might be 
amenorrhea, hypothalamic amenorrhea, or PCOS, or elevated testosterone. And you might then have that underlying hormonal dysfunction come to the surface because now your period is able to be a vital sign because it is reflecting your hormone. Understand that the pill's not bad because it's masking things. It's fine, but it masks things. So if you are on the pill and you like it for contraception, that's great. I recommend people stop the pill about three to six months before they want to be pregnant if they're comfortable using other forms of contraception like a condom. That way you're able to see how is my normal period pattern and get insight to your period as a vital sign before you start trying to get pregnant. The birth control pill, the combination of having daily ethanol estradiol and progestin in your body can cause some other side effects. So certainly it's not for everybody. It can cause an increased risk in blood clots, especially if you have an underlying clotting disorder. It can cause certain GI issues to be worse. It can cause certain mental disorders to be worse. It can also cause some of them to be better. So the list of the pros and the list of the cons from the birth control pill make it so that it's very individualized per person and very individualized based on which pill you're taking. It's a very effective contraceptive option, but the idea that there's a way to slowly come off of it, there's not. You just stop it, cold turkey, anytime, and your brain and ovary are gonna kick back to whatever is your normal. So understanding that your normal might not be perfect, and that's okay, that's what we're trying to get to the bottom of. There's no vitamins that you need to take to replenish that is going to help you restore hormonal balance. Everybody should be taking a multivitamin or a prenatal if you're trying to conceive. You don't need to go buy all these expensive birth control pill cleanses or detoxes with the idea that they are restoring these nutrients that are preventing you from having hormonal balance. Even though there have been some studies showing some vitamin deficiencies of B vitamins, C, E, selenium, zinc, and magnesium, these are overcome in a prenatal vitamin. This is largely probably due to just liver metabolism, same thing like sex hormone binding globulin, and these levels are back to normal within three months. This is not clinically significant, and the recommendation is if you're stopping the pill and you want to get pregnant, you should take a prenatal vitamin, which is going to have what you need. Ultimately, this is not something where the fancy birth control pill cleanse, which is marketed for that, is something that you need to buy those supplements. Those people are taking advantage of you. So healthy, balanced diet, a multivitamin, and you're going to be good. Overall, hope this video helped you. If you've got questions, ask them below so we can answer. As always, thank you so much. Please subscribe and follow along. You can get more information on the As Woman podcast or follow along on Instagram at Natalie Crawford, MD. Thanks, friends.